Many are making Cubane right now, but let me tell you this. Cubane itself is worthless. Cubane itself is indeed so worthless that you could only set it on fire and that's basically it. If you don't want to make Cubane but the more useful dicarboxylic acid, it's better but it's still useless unless you are making polymers. For this reason, we are going to make the much more useful Cubane monocarboxylic acid. The first steps towards making it are similar to dicarboxylic acid, but we are going to stop after the third step. To make the monocarboxylic acid, there will be many more steps and we are going to use much more dangerous chemicals. If you want to see all the steps, feel free to pause. Up to this point I only made cyclopentanone, ethylene ketol and nothing else and we may end up altering the procedure as we continue. Enough talking, let me show you how to make the ketol. For this synthesis we may only need 4 chemicals, but we are going to use a lot of each one. The most important ones are cyclopentanone, ethylene glycol and p-toluene sulfonic acid to act as a catalyst. The reaction creates water and we will want to remove that and therefore we are going to use an azeotropic distillation. You could use toluene but benzene has a lower boiling point which may increase the yield. And there you go, we are now ready to begin with the first step of making cubane monocarboxylic acid. These are the chemicals with their molecular structure. You could measure out the cyclopentanone using a measuring cylinder but I only have a 100ml one and therefore we are going to weigh the bottles before and after adding it to the flask. You can see that we used up 479.3 grams and that number was written down. The process was repeated until we had the desired amount of cyclopentanone in the reaction flask. To me cyclopentanone smells slightly sweetish and not disgusting at all. Wikipedia says that it also smells minty but I cannot agree on that. In total we used a little more than 2 liters of cyclopentanone. The empty bottles will be kept and I am going to use them for other chemicals. With the ethylene glycol you are going to see me do exactly the same. We started off with 1.436 kilograms but later on added an additional 718 milliliters. Too much ethylene glycol is not going to hurt and it's actually going to be beneficial for your yield. So use more ethylene glycol than you think you need and we ended up using 718 additional grams. The last liquid we are going to add before adding the catalyst is going to be benzene. You could make the benzene yourself and I actually did it in the past. But it is a potent carcinogen and I don't want to make it. So we got it from BM Chemistry in Poland and ended up using about 800 milliliters. The exact amount does not matter. In the end we observed this rainbow like effect in the flask. Unfortunately it didn't turn out great on camera. As a catalyst we are going to need a proton source. I ended up choosing p toluene sulfonic acid but even sulfuric acid should work. The paper used strongly acidic iron exchange resin which I also have but I think it's inconvenient. The catalyst was added and now we are finally able to start with the actual reaction. The apparatus consists of course of our massive flask and heating mantle, a Dean Stark trap and two condensers on top of the Dean Stark trap. Steering was turned on and you can see that the solution which was clear in the beginning quickly turned white. At room temperature the liquids don't dissolve in each other very well and therefore you saw this color change. A Dean Stark trap is a simple piece of equipment. Water and solvents come over and the water doesn't dissolve very well in the benzene and continues to settle on the bottom. It can then be drained off. I turned on the heating mantle and as it heated up we were able to observe this nice effect. The liquids which were now hot enough dissolved in each other and formed a clear solution. We heated for even longer and you finally were able to see it boil. In order to increase the efficiency by minimizing the heat loss, the flask was wrapped in aluminum foil. Up at the condenser you can see the benzene and water azeotrope condensing and flowing down. The layer of water collects at the bottom and it should get thicker over time. Under ideal conditions we would collect 414.35 grams of water and my Dean Stark trap is not going to fit that much, therefore we occasionally had to drain it. I used this pre-weight storage bottle in order to determine how much water we already collected. In the beginning of the video I only added ideal amounts of ethylene glycol, but too much is not going to hurt and it's actually going to improve the yield. Therefore I later on added the 700 and something additional grams. 
Towards the end of the reaction, the amount of water collected slowed down and I stopped the heating. We collected 406.2 grams, which is 8.1 grams less than expected. At our scale, this is perfectly acceptable. You likely wondered if the stuff in the big round bottom flask is pure. Of course it is not. It is still black, contains benzene, pyrotoluene sulfonic acid, ethylene glycol and some other side products which formed. I do not trust the big round button flask to withstand the vacuum distillation. Therefore we began by distilling off most of the benzene using a simple distillation and the vacuum distillation will be done in a smaller flask. Our product as well as ethylene glycol and leftover cyclopentanone as well as all of the contaminants have a relatively high boiling point in comparison to benzene. For this simple reason the benzene can easily be distilled off while not having to worry about anything else coming over. Independently from that, you still don't want to heat the solution in the big round bottom flask too much because it may lead to even more unwanted side products which decreases the yield. The benzene which we distilled off looks cloudy. This is actually a good thing because it means that we removed even more water. The solution in the boiling flask looks black and this is not a good thing. In order to get the pure product out of that black mess, we are going to do a vacuum distillation. But as I don't trust the big 6 liter flask not to implode while doing a vacuum distillation, we are going to use a 1 liter flask instead. I do not want to mess up my good vacuum pump with solvent vapors. For this reason I connected 3 cold traps in series using PVC tube, fit them into the styrofoam box and filled it up using dry ice. There certainly is leftover benzene in our reaction mixture and I don't want that to end up in my pump oil and in the atmosphere. Therefore it's going to condense and solidify in these cold traps and it's not going to mess with my pump. There are going to be extreme bumping issues with the vacuum distillation in the beginning. You want a quick way to vent the system and therefore we use this tuna ground butter flask with this valve. Heating and stirring were turned on and after a few seconds the first drops of liquid came over. When the temperature at the top reached 84 degrees celsius I swapped out the collection flasks. Cyclopentanone ethylene ketol boils at about 54 degrees celsius at a pressure of 30 millimeters of mercury. But because our pump can go much lower than that we can also observe lower boiling points of the ketol. At the current pressure the benzene shouldn't even stay in the product and it's going to end up in cold trap. At some point there was a lot of bumping in the apparatus and the temperature reached about 56 degrees celsius. Therefore we stopped the heating and let air back into the apparatus. The clear product was then transferred into a big storage bottle and while filling it into this bottle I noticed that it had a mint like odor. It may smell pleasant and healthy yet you should avoid inhaling too much of it. It's not too bad but it's also not going to be good for your health. The brown leftovers were transferred to another flask. They should still contain some products, but it's mainly consisting of ethylene glycol, petroleum sulfonic acid and other contaminants. The flask was filled back up and I did 4 more vacuum distillations. The process was the same and the temperature was about the same as well for each run. After the third run I took out the first cold trap and you can see a lot of crystals formed in it. There you go, all of that liquid in the cold trap. It's mainly benzene and it will be collected in my waste canister. I ran vacuum distillations for 10 hours straight and this was the product after the last vacuum distillation. Cyclopentanone ethylene ketol is a clear liquid with a mint like smell and it's very flammable. To demonstrate the flammability we put about half a milliliter into an aluminium can and lit it on fire. It burned well and in the beginning it did not produce any smoke. I allowed it to burn for longer and later on you could see a lot of smoke. In the end more benzene was collected in the cold trap and this was combined with the other benzene waste. We were left with about 1.8 kilograms of product and this corresponds to a 62% yield. The yield is relatively low and this is the reason why I am keeping this black liquid. In the future I am going to isolate impure product from this. One possible route to determine if what we made is actually what we wanted to is to use a refractometer. To use it you put some of your sample onto this glass plate and close it up. In the beginning this line up here is blurry and off center. Using the wheels on this apparatus you adjust it to make it non blurry and in the center. With this device you can measure the index of refraction and then you can compare it to what literature says. It was close enough to the number in the paper and other papers mentioned numbers which were even closer to our product. And there you go, this was the first part of the Cubane project. I hope you liked it and if you want to see the rest, make sure to subscribe.
I would like to thank the Laboratorium Discounter and I would especially like to thank all of my Patreons because without you guys I would not be able to show you this extremely expensive preparation. So thanks for that and if anyone else wants to see their name at the end of these videos as well as a few other benefits feel free to check out my Patreon.